Hello, hello everybody and welcome to our Tuesday TV, our Tuesday TV show where we watch Games Master and we're on episode 4 I believe and we're going to have a right good laugh and we're going to have a right good watch along, TV Tuesdays, that's what I meant to say, <laughs> I bloody called it wrong at the beginning, do you know what, I can call it whatever I want, it's my channel, oh yeah, that's the power the way of the lost has got at the moment. Is he responsible enough to wield it? Yeah? Or is he going to crash and burn it? <laughs> Fucking sink it like the Titanic. Listen, the crowd sounds excited tonight, and so am I. I've been waiting all week for this episode. Hello, Dominic. Let's listen to his opening monologue. First time, where have you been? But my, how tall you're getting. You're four weeks late, but we've all taken turns keeping this slot warm for your arrival. So sit yourself down, have a mug of chamomile. Get out your joystick and give it a loving caress, because that's what we'll be doing here for the next half hour. Innuendo, as usual, love it. Let's call up the Galactic Scoutmaster himself, the Games Master. The Games Master, our favourite TV personnel. That looks like a butt plug. We begin tonight with a truly anarchic escapade on a game called Road Rash. Oh, Road Rash was so good! Do you remember this? Do you remember Road Rash just whipping people? to the second flag at speeds of over 150 miles per hour. What's the challenge? Is to come first on the Redwood Forest stage. I'm afraid to say that amidst this rowdy rebel, he will need to ride with Beelzebub at your wheels. Ooh, okay, so the winner just has to come first on this stage that's picked. He's probably picked the hardest bloody stage going. <laughs> From Darford, Richard Wiltshire. Hello, Richard Wiltshire. Hello, hello. Are you ready to kick... So I'm a games master ass. I hope you win that golden joystick, my friend. We're all rooting for you. You can't see the presenters. The smoke machine's working overtime. <laughs> You've never actually played this game before, but you're a bit of a biking boffin, aren't you? Yep, I've played some here on the Amiga, and that's a good racing game, and I enjoyed that. I'm good at that, so I reckon I can handle this. Okay, now in this right, game, fair enough. He's ready. Generally get a bit dirty. Can you handle that? Well, I think so. I said, sort of hang on, there was a cheat mode where, where you use a machine gun. But I've never used my bare fist before. Okay, if you like to sit down in the hot seat, we'll get... was great where you just whip, whacked him. Um, if anybody's played um, Full Throttle, um, which is like an old LucasArts uh, PC adventure game, it's also just been remastered for the PS4. It looks amazing, by the way. I fully suggest it's a great game. There's actually a Road Rash scene where you... It's a very similar viewpoint, and you, it plays out the same way. You have to like whip them with like chainsaws or planks of wood or chains. It's really good. But if he does have to get rough, then try and grab... I love this guy. Every week he comes with his leather jacket, his orange shirt, his red cap and his denim jeans. I love it. Punch, kick, overtake your way through 14 other competitors to win the race. Are you ready? Are you ready to rush and roll, my friend? Bike and start the race. Okay, and off goes Richard. We <laughs> Rude boy. Has he picked that name? Oh, no. That's the person he's up against. Okay, so he's got to, he's got to come first to Master said. That's the challenge. God, I forgot how... Archaic these graphics were back in the day. Holy moly. That's a weird way to hold your joystick. Or your controller. What's that? What's that? He's got it on his he's got it on the top of his leg and he's holding the buttons with his fingers. I've never seen anyone hold a controller like that in my life. Do you know what else makes me laugh? Um whenever you're watching a TV advert and there's like a famous celebrity or someone you know or even an actor and they've got the controller, or even in a film or TV, and the way that they're holding the controller, you know they're not a gamer. They're not leaning forward with the shoulders on the, on the legs. And also as well, they're normally leaning back, really relaxed, and, the, and they move the controller as if it's a bloody motion controller and they don't need to, and they tap like the trigger button's like every second for no point whatsoever, and they just like wiggle the joysticks and do every button on the controller all the time. Oh, it's so funny. You can tell they're just, they're just not playing it properly. But his technique was really weird, the weird way he held that controller then. He couldn't do that with the N64 controller with you, with the big thing sticking out the back. Or the Dreamcast controller where the wire comes out the, the, uh, comes out the bottom rather than coming out the top. Oh wow, look at that, he just jumped over and that's awesome. So I'll take a few chances perhaps and just do his best to get ahead. Yeah, there's actually a hack with that Dreamcast controller. There is like a little clip or like a separator underneath the Dreamcast controller and you can actually pull the cable up and clip it on so that it acts as if the cable comes out the top, not the bottom. 
Go on, punch him off, lad. Punch him, lad. What position is he in? Oh, does that number say what position he's in? So I'm guessing he's in number four. Is that right? Go on, lad. Go on, lad. Three. Go on, go on, go on, lad. Go on, lad. Oh, he had to come first. Unlucky. Hey, if you wanted to hit that car, he would have made it. Unlucky, son. Unlucky, son. Me old chum. Unlucky. Maybe next time, matey. It was a very, very close race. 1.6 seconds between you and the eventual leader, Viper. What went wrong for you? Well, obviously, the crash. I had no time to practice my green cross code as I went through the intersection. I started to <laughs> The green cross code? The car came at the same time. Stop. Look. Listen. Look left. Look right. Cross the road. <laughs> well, we've enjoyed seeing you streak through the forest, Richard. Ladies and gentlemen, our gallant loser, Richard Welshaw. Oh, look here, mate. That is a Christmas... That's... That's when Christmas jumpers were just your everyday jumpers. It, that's the 90s for you. <laughs> when every day was a Christmas jumper. <laughs> the mad patterns on that. Playing games. First up, return to the time when dinosaurs ruled the earth and Mars bars were only 10p in Shadow of the Beast. Oh, Shadow of the Beast, great. Did they, didn't they recently do a remaster to this game? I'm sure they did. Looks good, plays fast. Uh, but doesn't offer anything new in the final. Joe Dave, a fantasy round. What books is rare? I've got some amazing fancy books. Tad Williams. Is, I, I've, I discovered the best, one of the best fantasy books I've ever read. It's amazing. Tad Williams. Next up on the Amiga, become a deity. It's called Otherland. It's, it's amazing. I, I, I'll maybe put a picture in my, in my Discord, but you need to read that book. Everyone needs to read that book. He pre basically predicted VR. And it's not just that. The way that it explains gaming of people gaming in the future is pretty much how it is and how it's going to be. It's so clever. Five minutes has passed and it's four hours. You, you really just get absorbed into the game. Lots of brilliant graphics, brilliant gameplay. One of the best games around. Yeah, it's a cool graphic style, that. It's an interesting isometric style, isn't it? You know how the map's moving like that in 3D? It reminds me of when they showed off that uh, Microsoft augmented reality thing. In King's Quest Five, it's not pushing back the boundaries. Looks you know when they did the Minecraft demo where anybody who hasn't got the goggles on, it just looks like it's a flat table in front of them. But anyone wearing the Microsoft augmented reality goggles, like the Minecraft world is like like Lego bricks on top of the table. Do you remember that? Whatever happened to that never came out that, did it? PSVR came out, but I don't think that Microsoft's augmented reality came out. I wonder if their next generation console they're gonna do um The battle for the British console. They're gonna add do VR. With Nintendo Oh look at this Nintendo advert. Here we go. Advertising war. Sega Marketing Supremo Philip Lay had a wee chat with us about Sega's battle plan. Sega! Sega take a more unilever type approach to marketing. Which means that they are probably Tom Kalinske like is the man the when it comes to video games and creating a brand. He was the head of America, uh, Sega of America. He's the guy who's responsible for the success of Sonic and, and, and you know making Sega a competitor to Nintendo back in the day. Great story. Console Wars. Make sure you read that book. Not unless you have one of these. <laughs> Sega Giga, check him out. He's brilliant at playing Sega games. Now, I bet it's thicker than the Nintendo Switch, but is it thinner? I mean, but is it wider? And he's probably a brilliant surfer in California. So with all those things, I think every man would um, love to have those qualities. Maybe, but Jimmy's creators were hopelessly wrong with their early ideas of how a game playing hero should look. It was horrifying because uh, we got it so horribly wrong. Our character was long haired, rough, a bit dirty. And all the kids came back saying that they thought that sort of person was a bit of a granddad, really. And uh, they wanted someone much more clean cut and much younger. <laughs> much more clean cut! In his customised trailer wow. for Spearhead Sega's assault on Nintendo and the British market. It's a battle which looks set to... I don't know, when I've been playing video games for a week non-stop and I've not left the house, I get a bit scruffy. If you'd like more information about anything... Like I've grown a Gandalf beard instantly. Games Master Club. We'll give you the number at the end of the show. So, some sound advice on where to put your pennies. Now it's time for our <laughs> celebrity challenge, and we'll go over to Games Master to find out what it is. Ooh, what's the next one? What's the next one? What have you got for us? What have you got for us? Rather violent nature for my first challenge. As I'm sorry to say, my second offering is also not in terribly good taste. <laughs> it's taken from a game called Heimdall. And it's set. In the oh, this is hilarious. This makes me laugh, this one. 
I was I was thinking of live streaming this over on my Twitch. By the way, if anybody um, doesn't know, I'm on Twitch now. Um, you can find me on there most days, um, if not every day. Um, all my links are in my battles. You can find me way the lost anywhere. Basically, go go and have a look. But this game, yeah, I was, I was planning on doing this game. Now, the competitor on this challenge requires a steady throwing arm and bags of confidence. Who better than the greatest darts player in the history of the game, five times world champion, Eric Bristol? Eric Bristol! Do you remember Bullseye, the TV show? Bullseye! 180! If you're from England, you know exactly what I mean. Now, Eric... You've come out with a good few nine dart finishes in your time, but you're playing with a different set of arrows tonight. How confident do you feel? That's a different game. I've had a practice at it, but I'm not, I'm not brilliant at it. But uh, I'm looking forward to it. It's different, isn't it? Give it a go, mate. You're a celebrity on TV. Go on, son. Being a Viking, you've had a night on the tiles and you're a bit full with alcohol. Will this affect your throwing? Well, I'm used to a night on the tiles, but I mean... <laughs> 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 yeah, they get to drink beer, don't they, while they're playing darts? It's like the best sport ever. It's a sport, and, and while they're doing that, they're like their actual competition. They're there with tables where they sit down and have beer while they're playing. It's amazing. What other sport can you sit and drink beer while you're playing it? Well, I suppose pool and snooker, but I don't know if they let you do that. Welcome back to Games Master. Welcome. Presently, in our game playing Hello. Is five times world darts playing champion Eric Bristow. And here is the first appearance of Dave Perry, the games animal. A lot of history behind this guy. He's a very, very good gamer. If you've ever watched him on anything else, you can still catch him on YouTube now and again. Um, but yeah, I mean, we will watch the Dave Perry saga and the Dominic Diamond saga unfold over the seasons as we as we continue to watch. And it will end in an epic climactic ending that you will, will may, you may or may not um, expect. Game on! Oh, straight in the head! Oh dear. Basically, he has to he has to throw the axe at the uh, the pigtails to cut them off to release her. And at the moment, he's just cut, throwing them at her head. He's got a minute minute forty one left. I don't think he's going to do it. Oh God, he's he's whacked her in the head three times. So he's got no lives, so he's got as many chances as he wants. That's a cool looking joystick with the uh, neon green. Basically, he's got many many tries as he wants. All is that green or is that yellow? I can't tell. Um, all he has to do is just he's just chop off the pigtails. Oh God, look at him! He's just got three in a row there, son. Oh, look at this! He's doing a flipping comeback. Go on, laddie. Oh my days! Oh, do you have to reset if you hit it like that? Oh, no, you don't. Okay, so that's good. So it saves the ones you've done. Go on, mate. Go on, mate. I mean, normally you'd say steady hand, quick fire button would do it. But, I mean, that shaky cursor doesn't make life easy for him. All right. And it's hard on the bottom of the screen because that cursor does drop off the screen onto the table very, very quickly. I see. Now, oh, he's only got three left. He's only got three left. Do you know what? If he did it, this would be a pretty good, pretty good, pretty good show. Oh, come on, come on, come on. Okay, two left. Oh, just missed that. He's got 25 seconds left. Come on, Eric. Oh, and it's just two more. He's got about 20 seconds left. Come on, Eric. We know you can do it. Oh, he skins. You will have to be very doing, close, Dave. He's doing the right thing. He's doing like just keeping going. Oh, my God. Two more. Go, 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 mate. Go, 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 go. Go, 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 go. Come on, laddie. Five. Oh, shit. He's fluffed it. Oh, look it. Do you know what? I thought he was going to do it. Like, in the beginning, I thought he's definitely not doing it. Towards the middle, I thought, oh, we might do it. Towards the end, I was like, nah, no chance. But the interesting thing is, the last plat there was about in the double 16 area, which is usually your favourite finish. That's right. I've been missing that as well lately. So that doesn't matter. And the bottom ones were harder. Yeah. I don't know why, but... Okay, well now listen, Eric. As Jim Bolton would say, you're a lovely smashing bloke, but here's what you would have won. <laughs> Games Master Golden. Ooh, and who doesn't want one of them? But unfortunately, lovely. One of the darts and it has to go back. 
But Eric, have you enjoyed yourself? I've had a great time, yeah. Been well, a bit of fun. We've really enjoyed watching you. Ladies and gentlemen, Eric Bristol! <laughs> Now, perhaps with a couple of tips and cheats, Eric could have completed one of his famous nine dart finishes. This is the part of the show where you can get your exclusive tips and cheats. Oh, let's find out what, what, what cheats we can find out to games that are donkey's years old. <laughs> oh, by the way, if you don't follow Nostalgia Nerd or Octavia on YouTube, um, she's put up a really good video about the... Um, Welcome. Oh, uh, the uh, Atari Jaguar VR headset. <laughs> is there any way I could get any more? Still languishing behind on ducktails. Oh dear, oh dear, you are in need of help. Now please listen very carefully. If you visit the African mines, you'll be sent back to Transylvania, where you'll find two extra lives. Ducktails were a good game. I remember playing, uh, oh, what was it? Ducktails and the Lucky Dime Caper. Donald Duck and the Lucky Dime Caper on the Sega Master System. That was a great game. At the start of the level. Repeat this procedure as often as you like to build up a hearty reserve of lives. Thanks very much. Bye. I'm delighted to help. Are we ready for the <laughs> I'm delighted to help. Hello, Games Master. The eyeball monster at the end of level two in Altered Beast keeps on killing me. How can I destroy it? Oh, yes, yeah, a pain, that one. I'm rather surprised you haven't managed to dispose of this ocular ogre yet. Ocular ogre? It's a little courage and nerve. Simply get as close to the monster as possible, then activate your force field. The eyeball monster will then be out of sight, out of mind. Boom, look at that, nice little trick. Uh, who's next up, I wonder? Hello. Hello, and nice to see you. Now, what can I do for you? I've been trying for hours, but I cannot kill the wart in Mario 2. Could you help me? <laughs> Simple, dear boy. Catch the vegetables which come out of the pots and throw them at wart. Six vegetables in his mouth, worthy of eating. Hey, on my Donkey Kong live stream, we had a barrel where we had to throw stuff in the guys in the boss's mouth. I think that's probably enough advice for one week. But if you have any queries, you know where to... So that's his streamer setup. That's the Page Master streamer setup if he was a streamer today. Did you see that? <laughs> With his microphone and his uh, screen and his Twitch layout. <laughs> Hello again. Not doing too well today, are we? Two failures out of two. Perhaps I've been overestimating your ability... For the last of this week's challenges, I've opted for a game by the name of Panzer Kickboxing. Ooh. Uh, oh, that's got some nice... Look at the animations on that. There's several frames of animation in that movement. That looks smooth. That looks really impressive for back in the day, actually. Well impressed with that pixel art. May the best man win. I was talking so much, I didn't even hear what the challenge was. Sorry about that. <laughs> we'll find out now. ...in the Ewings of Dallas. A brutal brother-sister punch-up... Please welcome Jason and Lisa Pozo. Oh, brother and sister going in for the fight. Brother and sister against each other on Gaze Master. Now, Jason, if I turn to you first, how much practice have you had at the game? Um, I haven't had that much, but I think I can beat her anyway. Okay, so you really fancy your chances against your sister? Um, yeah. When I you... normally beat her at home. All right. Wow. Well, he has to beat now because he's... <laughs> And she used to fight very dirty, pulling hair, biting, lots of things like that. Are we going to see a dirty fight from you tonight? Well, it's not going to be that dirty because I'm going to win anyway. <laughs> <laughs> These two are funny. Would you like to take your seats and begin the fight? They should do a Games Master reunion TV show and get all the contestants that came on when they were kids to do the same challenges as adults. That would be well cool. Now, Tim, what kind of a fight are we going to see here tonight? I think I'd be very surprised if we don't see a very dirty fight. Panzer Kickboxing is all about, uh, basically, there are very few rules. You really go for it. You can punch your opponent, kick your opponent, and if it helps you at all, you can even try biting them. Right. I mean, there are very few rules here. Okay, well, <laughs> so we're going to see an excellent fight here. Lawless. Competitors ready? Like bare-knuckle fighting. fighting. Now, in this fight, Jason is in the red trousers playing from left to right. Lisa's in the blue. I love the pixel art. A tumble already, but she's up, she's safe, she's okay. Oh, and Lisa's down again now. Lisa Lisa's suddenly knows that he uses kicking, basically. Uh, he's, he's, those, feet, those feet are flying, he's not using his fist. I mean, he shouldn't beat her too much because if I was against my little sister, I wouldn't want to, you know, I wouldn't want to embarrass her a hundred percent. Do you know what I mean? You know, he should at least let her let her win, make it a close race. He shouldn't completely beat her too much because it's a bit embarrassing for her. That he should, he should be a gentleman and. Make it look as if she had a chance. You know what I mean? It's like when you're playing pool in, with a girl when you're on a date and you 
you know, accidentally don't pop the balls. Do you know what I mean? You know what I mean. <laughs> Three, two, one, and it's the end of the first round, and we think Jason is slightly ahead on points. Certainly, Jason played the clever boxing there. So it's the final round, and they're on two lights each, so it's all even now, <laughs> everything to play for. Lisa Lodge's in with a flying round house kick, doesn't quite come off there. Oh, and she... Oh, spinning back fist then, she got him, didn't she? Coming back like a demo here, Tim. Absolutely, Lisa's... Oh, oh no, down. just as I say that, she's down. <laughs> Oh dear, Lisa's got to get turning around here. Oh, nicely on the other side of the opponent. And they're just ducking and weaving all around, dodging each other. So the hitboxes, hitboxes in games is basically like an area where the computer says if, you know, a certain point of impact happens in this, you know, square or this pixel or whatever, it's called a hitbox, you know, the following action will happen, for example. Um, so with this old game, obviously the hitboxes aren't as up-to-date and as modern as modern games now. So if you can see that if the characters overlap... Um, slightly it doesn't register the kicks and the punches which is why when they're both over each other they're kicking and punching nothing's happening they have to be slightly to the left or to the right of each other oh she got him down wait has she done it oh my god at least she knocked him down oh I think she might win <laughs> look at her she's looking at him she's like yeah gutted mate I think she's just won <laughs> He came out acting dead cocky. He tried to embarrass her by kicking her ass and then she ended up beating him anyway. Oh, do you know what? He got what he deserved then. Using tactics more of going, I was staying back and then going in for the odd shot. And then I started going in to try and knock her out. You should have been a gentleman, mate. You paid dearly for it. Ooh, yeah. Oh, dear. Hey, well done, Lisa. Check you out, girl. Then you just fought back. What happened? Well, at the beginning, I thought the joystick wasn't working or something because I kept just being knocked down. And then I just remembered that um, what I'd been doing, playing before, and then I just, and I just won. Okay, you did very well. So um, when you go home tonight, are you going to have a fight of your own and then see who wins that? Hopefully. <laughs> well, good. <laughs> Lisa, as our winner today, you have won one of the most coveted prizes in television. Tonight, Lisa is the proud winner of our Golden Games Master joystick. <laughs> Yay, golden joystick. Every time I see it, I love it. Yeah, that was an entertaining, that was an entertaining challenge, that. So with that bout of high-tech fisticuffs, time has run out on this week's Games Master. Oh, I'm so sad to go. I'm off to Quaff, and I'll see you next week at the same time. Look at that. How time flies when you're having fun. Do you know what I mean? How time flies when you're having fun. Well, look, people. Looks like we're going to be waiting till next week for next week's episode now, aren't we? I hope you've had fun. If you're not supporting me already, please subscribe to my YouTube channel. Um, you can follow me on Twitter. You can support me on Patreon. And you can watch me live stream on Twitch, on all the social media, on all the things. Um, I'm hoping you enjoy the content on the YouTube channel. We've got daily content over here. And, um, yeah, it's been my absolute pleasure watching this with you. Um, thank you to all my patrons, and especially um, my patron, Aya Brea, um, Parasite Eve. Um, she is one of the founders of my patron, my first backer. So we appreciate the love and support, and we'll catch you guys next time. Do not ring this number, because it doesn't work. <laughs> See you on the next video. Calls are charged at 36 pence a minute after 6pm and 48 pence during the day. Lines are open around the clock.